So recently we've seen a few more budget GPUs from both AMD and Nvidia, and today I wanted to discuss which ones are the better options. And this is purely from the perspective of if you need a GPU right now, because if you're just like kind of wanting a bit of an upgrade from something that's a couple of years old, uh, yeah, definitely don't check these GPUs out. The value proposition of what you could have bought, you know, a few years ago really is not that much better. Uh, so, you know, if you've been using integrated graphics or maybe, you know, GPUs that are a few years old, then yeah, possibly these GPUs could be worth checking out. I also think it's pretty safe to say that uh, in terms of what we have on the table here, it's probably all you're really gonna have to work with for early to mid 2022 in terms of you know cheap or budget GPUs. I really don't think anything else is coming down in the near future. So for example, uh, new GTX cards from Nvidia or 6400 series from AMD, you know, just based off of the price to performance that we're working with here, I don't even think that those GPUs are in the pipeline. So let's dive right in and take a look at what these newly released options actually are. So starting on the Nvidia side of things, we pretty much only have the RTX 3050 and 3060 if we're sticking to kind of budget and mainstream pricing. Both are targeting 1080p gaming, although the 3060 does offer a pretty decent spec bump over the 3050. The extra 4 gigabytes of VRAM probably isn't that useful, but the faster memory is, and so is roughly the 40% bump in CUDA cores. Then on the AMD Radeon side of things, we have the RX 6500 XT, 6600, and 6600 XT. And while the 6600 cards honestly aren't too different on paper, the 6500 XT is the one that stands out here as being pretty weak. In fact, it has four compute units less than the Xbox Series S, which is a budget gaming console, and a criminally low 64-bit memory bus width. It's also very odd to see only four gigabytes of VRAM on a GPU released in 2022, especially from AMD, who have previously stated that four gigabytes of VRAM is not enough for modern games. The two Radeon 6600 cards though, they're about what you would expect spec-wise based on the current GPU market. Now before we take a look at performance, the biggest thing that we should talk about first is in fact the pricing. How much can you expect to pay for these new cheaper GPUs? How much more expensive are they above the launch MSRP and how does that differ depending on the region? Let's start by taking a look at Europe, where I've sourced the pricing from German retailer Case King. The white dot indicates the MSRP for each GPU and the colored dots indicate the average of the two lowest in stock listings. So just to confirm, these prices are real and it's a pretty accurate representation of what these cards are being sold for. So with this graph, we can see how much each GPU is priced above its MSRP and how they stack up against one another. For example, Nvidia's budget GPUs seem to be quite a bit more inflated compared to AMD for whatever reason, paying only 40 euros to upgrade from an RTX 3050 to an RX 6600 would be pretty worthwhile, but spending another 170 euros to upgrade to an RTX 3060 definitely would not. Then taking a look at pricing here in Australia via PC case gear, it's kind of a similar story. Again, taking the average of the cheapest two in stock listings, AMD's Radeon GPUs are overall just looking like better value. The RX 6600 XT, for example, which outperforms the RTX 3060 is almost $100 AUD cheaper. And then as for the 6600 versus the 3050, spending that extra 30 bucks there gets you a noticeable jump in performance. Then we see the very same trend when looking at Overclockers UK, where especially the RX 6600 XT illustrates some pretty good value, at least in comparison to the other GPUs that you can buy in today's market. The price of the 3050 is a bit more digestible here as well compared to Europe and in Australia, but the RX 6600 XT is what wins here in terms of overall value there in the UK. Now, Micro Center over in the US unfortunately don't list what cards are in stock and which ones are not, so instead I've taken the average of the lowest four listings for each GPU. The price scaling seems to line up pretty accurately with the other regions, and overall, Nvidia is a bit more expensive than AMD again. I will say though that I do expect actual in-store pricing for the 3060, and especially the 3060 Ti, to be significantly higher than what we're looking at right here. If any of you have recently bought those GPUs from a micro center, I'd be really interested to hear what you paid for them down below. For now though, I definitely won't draw any conclusions on that fairly optimistic 3060 Ti pricing. But what about the RX 6500 XT? Pricing for that GPU is consistently really low compared to the other GPUs and is by far the closest to its MSRP. Well, although the pricing is pretty tempting, this is a very weak and slightly complicated GPU that you should probably avoid. I mean, at 1080p, it makes the RTX 3050 look like a really strong GPU, which we know it is not. If you think that's bad, take a look at this. When we compare it to the GTX 1060 from mid-2016, we can see just how 
bad the RX 6500 XT actually is. And it's not just a slight difference either. In GTA 5, the 6500 XT gets absolutely stomped by what is almost a six year old $250 GPU. But the biggest problem of all though with this GPU is if you're running it in a system that uses a PCIe Gen 3 motherboard, which is probably most of you. Since AMD are using a much narrower PCIe bandwidth on the GPU end, unless you're running Gen 4 speeds on your motherboard, expect to absolutely cripple performance. In F1 2021, there is a noticeable step down in performance if you're limited by a PCIe Gen 3 motherboard, and there's also a lot more stuttering on Gen 3 speeds as well. Just to recap, regular GPUs with an X16 slot don't see much of a difference here at all, but it's really night and day with the 6500 XT. Then in Doom Eternal, we go from having playable performance here on the right at Gen 4 speeds to barely being able to sit above 30 FPS running Gen 3. The GPU is choking so hard here in fact that the actual benchmark simulation is running slower because of it. That's why you see it lagging behind the Gen 4 configuration on the right. Taking a look at the next GPU in line though, we have the RTX 3050, which looking at pricing in each region seems to be only worth it in the UK. Everywhere else, the pricing is just too close to the RX 6600, which is a much faster GPU. If you're running a 1080p 144Hz monitor, for example, paying those extra few bucks for the 6600 would be a worthwhile investment. You'll get a lot closer to running the full 144Hz in most games, or you can afford to bump up the graphics quality a little bit more. Whichever way you put it, the 6600 is easily what I'd recommend here over the 3050. In most regions, the price difference between these two cards is almost pocket change. Now, as for the RTX 3060, performance here falls pretty close to the 6600 XT, overall a little bit slower on average, but funnily enough, it's the 3060 that's more expensive in Europe, the UK, and here in Australia as well. It's only in the US where the 3060 seems a bit more fairly priced, but again, the pricing here is only based off of Micro Center's listing prices, not necessarily what is actually in stock. So I do have a strong feeling that the 3060 is a bit more overpriced there as well, but the overall recommendation does tend to lean toward the RX 6600 XT, at least based off of current pricing. And if you want more performance than this, well, prepare to spend a few hundred dollars extra for a 3060 Ti or 6700 XT. Only in the European market does that jump in performance versus price actually make kind of sense. But taking a bit of a step back here, it is really hard to recommend spending 600 euros plus on this kind of GPU performance. So the GPU that is offering the best value for the money at the moment is the RX 6600 from AMD. And the XT model is not too far behind, I think in some regions and in some listings, it could be worth the extra pocket change, but the 6600 XT is kind of what I'm recommending at the moment. It does seem to be a lot more fairly priced versus the 3050 and the 3060. Again, it's hard to recommend any of these GPUs based off of this sort of pricing, but if you've been waiting to pull the trigger on just something, then these two are looking like the best value for the money at the moment. GPU pricing will continue to improve slowly over time as these cards just sit on the shelf for a little bit longer, but I think it'll be quite a while before we see $330 RTX 3060s. I also wouldn't worry at all about ray tracing or AI super sampling from AMD or Nvidia when we're talking about these sort of specs and especially at just 1080p resolution, but there are two scenarios that could swing you towards getting an Nvidia GPU at the moment, for example, a 3060 over a 6600 XT. And those instances would be the support for CUDA, optics or RTX rendering in 3D apps. So if you do engineering or design, it might be worth you know sacrificing some gaming performance for a significantly faster render time. And the other instance is for online streaming. So the 3050 and the 3060, they both have an NVENC encoder, which is extremely good when it comes to streaming. But if you don't need that, then AMD here is definitely winning the price to performance battle as far as gaming. So this is what we have to work with at the moment. Definitely still not ideal, but it is nice to see that things are improving very slowly. And again, as these cards just become available for longer and longer, you can continue to see those prices drop very slowly. Hopefully though, you still found this video helpful. As always, a huge thanks for watching and I'll see you all in the next one.